Hi there, my name is Simon Morse and I am the author and illustrator of the book The Adventures of Rocket Kid and in this video I'm hoping to show you just a little bit about how I create an illustration for the book uh, so that you can see the work that goes behind the pictures that you'll see when reading the book. So this is the picture that we're going to be talking about today, uh, one that I've just done specifically for this video of uh, Rocket Kid sort of venturing from his back garden. I've done this in Coral Painter, uh, that's how I've painted the image on the computer, however the image was first hand drawn on paper and then the line art was done with a pen over some pencil work and we're going to see now the background that I drew first. I drew the background and the character separately, so this is the background. Now to draw this I basically drew it on uh, paper with pencil, there's no sort of simple way to describe this process but by being messy with a pencil you can then tidy it up with some nice clean lines with a thick uh, brush like pen afterwards. It's kind of the same process really for drawing the character. The character was drawn also with a pencil first using some really big chunky basic shapes and then I add the details over that and when you're doing the pictures like that and you start doing big chunky shapes it's much easier to pose the character and to get him exactly in the position you'd like him in before you start to do the line work and then you get a lot more freedom to experiment with shapes and things like that first. And then uh, once I've done the two pictures separately I'd put them together again in Painter uh, by scanning them and putting them together in Painter. Now when they're in Painter I do uh, adjust the pictures. I go to Effects, then Correct Colours, uh, tonal, co uh, tonal Control, then Correct Colours and I put the contrast to full and take the brightness down to about 45% so you get nice clean artworks. And then I take it into the program. So I open it in a new canvas set the uh, line work to the top layer and put it to multiply mode so I can paint underneath it and then I'll go in and just brush in the background so in the video at the moment you can see me using soft brushes to create the background I then use a, a blender to blend those colors together in the background you can also see I created a, uh, a shape which is the moon in the background I actually don't do anything else to that moon the whole way through so the background was just created with soft brushes and then a, uh, a blender called Just Add Water to uh, blend the colours in nicely together in, in a separate layer. Then the moon's added again in a new layer separately uh, just by choosing a colour and uh, creating a circle. Now the rest of the painting of this picture is actually really straightforward. It's a little bit like a colouring in book. Um, you've got the, your lines there obviously so you're just picking colours and going around colouring those parts in. So the, all, all the characters' colours are done in a separate layer to the background to help with some of the painting a bit later on that you'll see in some of the other videos but the the colouring in is basically just done with a, a big chunky flat pen set to 100% uh, opacity so this is genuinely a lot like a children's colouring in book you uh, you just choose your colour and uh, whip round colouring things in now I think this is about 16 times the speed that it actually uh, happened in uh, the colouring so I think the whole picture from beginning to end probably took about four hours uh, and in this first video you're going to see everything taking uh, about six minutes so obviously we're, we're speeding things up quite a lot here so again in another different layer and a different layer to the uh, characters colors I'm painting the background now choosing the colors for the background and night scene is quite tricky actually um, so the best way to do this is to have a load of reference images open so you can't actually see it in this video but on my other monitor because I work with two monitors I've got um, some reference pictures open all of nighttime pictures of the countryside basically so as I'm going around picking colors for the background I'm doing that whilst looking at a reference and again this is nothing uh, clever or special no clever brushes used or special tricks this is just me coloring in in a separate layer uh, using colors that I'm get getting from a reference picture so it's actually dead easy it's just a big chunky brush coloring in again like a coloring book coloring in the lines I quite often uh, pick colors from certain areas and reuse them on the picture just to make life a bit easier for myself but actually this is really straightforward and with a bit of a bit of practice getting used to a Wacom tablet absolutely anyone could have colored in this picture uh, just basically picking the different areas and coloring in within the lines now later on I'll add textures and things like this to some of the areas and a lot of shadow effects and things like that to make it a bit more dramatic and nighttime looking but the first thing really is just to get a, a nice colored base in the background to try to remember the fact that it's night time so everything's going to look a little bit bluish because of the lack of light and uh, and everything's obviously going to be much darker but later on again in some of the later videos that I'll show you of this uh, there's going to be um, quite a lot of tweaking of the colors going on because generally I never really get it right first time so uh, 
it's more of a case of just whacking down some colors then I can do some tweaking of areas or I can actually tweak the whole area of the background at once if I want to and that's the beauty of keeping the background and the foreground separate I actually had right in right from the beginning of the painting in my mind that the character in the foreground would be quite bright just to attract the viewer's attention and the background would be quite dark there's no real reason for the character being light in the foreground there's no light coming on the front of him or anything like that no light source which is really making him stand out but you can kind of take liberties when doing a picture like this and the liberty I took was to just make sure he was really standing out as being the focal point of the picture so to do that I just kept the colors on him quite a bit lighter than the rest of the page just so he was the one that was attracting the attention now one other thing I've got in mind when I'm painting the background is the fact that I'm gonna later on want some glows coming from some of these windows to make it look like there's some people still awake in a couple of the houses so some of the windows will get painted dark blue to sort of demonstrate the fact that it's nighttime reflecting the light from the sky which is of course dark blue but then a lot of them uh, I'm gonna actually paint kind of a yellow color just to make it look a bit like there's a glow coming from it inside the buildings just to sort of a bit of an indication of some life going on so this process is really uh, really very straightforward it's just a case of picking your colors using your a hundred percent opacity uh, flat brush I think I'm using just a, a I think it's called a flat pen a flat color pen uh, is the tool that I'm using just to color in and it's just set to 100 percent opacity and I can change the brush size using the um, squared open and close brackets on the keyboard and I just whip around the picture very quickly uh, adding color to the areas this is actually probably one of the longest parts of the painting just coloring in the basic colors but once you've done this everything else goes on top of it and it's kind of the the easy and the quickest part to get done and you can see it all done quite quickly here in this video so that brings us almost to the end of this first video really it's a case of creating your illustration getting your artwork nice and clean uh, putting it in your program cleaning up the lines and then uh, coloring it in with a, a simple brush so that's the end of the first video and in the second video I'll explain more about the shading thanks for taking the time to watch my video I'll see you in part two thanks